I didn't know that I was autistic until I was 40. Back then, they didn't know what autism was, so they just smack kids when they misbehaved or didn't make eye contact. And the same thing in school. Like, I was not just bullied, I was beaten constantly from grade first to ninth grade. And then I thought New York. I sat in the subway and the entire time I've been living in Denmark, where I'm from, I always felt like I was sticking out, like a, like an outsider. But as soon as I sat in the subway, I looked at everybody else and I was like, oh my God, I'm the most normal person here. <laughs> this is amazing. Hi, it's a little random. I make videos and I just interview people as they walk by. Uh -huh. If you have a couple of minutes. About what? What's the subject? About you. Huh? About you. Hi, excuse me. This is a little random. Hi there. Hi, this is kind of random, but um, I make videos and I just kind of interview folks as they walk by. Hi, excuse me. Very random. I just make videos where I just interview people as they walk by. Sure, it will be the second time today. Really? Yeah. Cool. Please, take a seat right there. Yeah. Right here. Has this been working out? You just... Yeah. Asking random questions to random strangers. I'm from Denmark, but I moved here 15 years ago. Okay. Oh, so we're gonna sit here like this? Yes. Oh, cool. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah. What's your name? I'm Eric. Um, David. David, nice yeah, to meet you. This so, is not six feet apart, but I got like five vaccinations. So okay, right. I have like three, so. Okay. I doubled down on my autism. So like, I'm like twice as autistic now as I used You're to be. You what? I doubled down on my autism Your by autism? getting the, yeah, with uh, getting a vaccine. That's a joke. You don't have autism, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born you do have autism. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah, artistic. Like, yeah. I mean, this... you know, obviously that doesn't show because nobody knows what it is, but it's just like being gay. It's just a different. <laughs> it's just like what? It's just like being gay. It's just like what your brain is just wired differently. It doesn't make you a different person or a different. Really quick, just to find autism. It's definitely a social deficit. Like my brain is not wired to read social cues. It's more like wired to read visual information. Like those columns over there on that building, three by three by three by three. I don't know. Nothing interesting about that, but what I notice is all that stuff. And then the other part is sensory overload. Like for instance, I can deal with that for like maybe a minute and then my brain can't filter. Hang on, I have to wait for this bus to pass. That's a lot of noise. My brain just notices everything and I manually have to go. This guy driving without a license plate is not important. Anyway, so what are you going to interview me about? I'm already interviewing you. Oh, you are? Cool. This is part of the interview. Awesome. To be frank, you seem totally socially fine to me. Right, but that's a mask. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I know how to interact with people. I've you learned this so, skill. Yeah, but it's not something that comes natural. How did you learn social skills over time? I, I don't think I've learned them. I don't have any friends. I mean, I have friends, but I'm not aware of them. And then they tell me that they miss me. I was like, wait, we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? Because I can't read people. If you, you know, can't read it, people, how do you trust people? That's the question. And I don't know. I really don't know. You seem like a nice guy, but again, other people have seemed nice that were total assholes. You're funny though. You're funny. Apparently. Have you been able to leverage that? No, because whenever I try to make a joke, I'm not funny. <laughs> That's how I lost one of my best friends. He loves Seinfeld. And one yeah. time we were walking around and he was lost and he lived in New York for 30 years. I was like, how is this possible? And then the line from Seinfeld is Elaine says to Jerry, you're exhausting to be around. And he says something like, why do you keep coming or something like that? Yeah. I said this to my friend. I think I said, your personality is exhausting. And he just looked horrified. He texted me back, or you know, be back. I don't think we should hang out anymore. You're being terrible to be around. I was like, oh, damn, this is happening again. How did that feel? Ter terrible. Do you harbor any internal resentment or bitterness? That's another thing about, again, autism is like, I am I'm very mostly unaware of my own emotions. I only really understand my emotions like 10, 20 years later. It's like, oh, I was angry. Oh, okay. What's your, uh, what's your biggest fear? That's a weird question, fear, because fear is, I don't know, it's not really, it's never true. That's the whole thing about fear. You can tell everything about a person by how they walk and what their face looks like. That guy, he's very upset. He feels like he's looking for a friend or something. He's angry. Do you ever feel lonely? Sure, obviously. I mean, I've been feeling lonely since I was 
three years old, I remember sitting in the playground like, why are everyone else playing with friends and I'm just sitting here? That was a weird thing. It's a battle. You want to be around people, but also you hate being around people because it's exhausting. I mean, right now talking to you, my neck's starting to hurt because I'm like, I haven't talked this much for like years. Would it help if you lean back? No, it helps if I leave. <laughs> this is actually kind of a symptom of a new way of life that I started to adopt. I was never really in the moment. I was always in the future or in the past. So I'm trying to live more in the moment, which is difficult. What I'm doing now, which is why I'm talking to you. What was your name? Eric. I'm never gonna remember that.